National Medal of Honor Heritage Center is coming to Mount Pleasant in 2023. I sit down exclusively with Tom McQueenie, the chairman of the National Medal of Honor Foundation for this edition of Quintin's Close Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and download my free Quintin's Close Ups app in your Apple or Google Play Store. Tom McQueenie, yeah. welcome to Quentin's Close Ups. Oh, thank you, Quentin. Yeah, good to be here. You too. You are a local icon here in Charleston. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> that makes me turn to stone. <laughs> Obviously, you have your iconic State Farm insurance agency here. And now you're building on your busy slate. Obviously, you are the chairman of the Honor, Medal of Honor Museum Foundation. Correct. Yeah. And even to this moment, we still have confusion about what's going on. <laughs> well, I hope to straighten all that out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> by a Congressional Act in 1999, we were designated as the Medal of Honor site, you know, to honor our, our, our nation's greatest heroes. So that's uh, been so since 1999, 20 years. Right. There's a... Uh, contract in place at uh, Patriots Point with the Yorktown that will continue in, into late uh, 2023. Mm. We hope to have our new museum up before that contract even expires. Mm. Uh, but also, uh, you know, what we what we have there is a, uh, uh, a function that we feel like we need to do, not just for the, the Metro Charleston area or the state of South Carolina, but for all of America. We we feel like we need to rediscover patriotism and the the best place to do that is right here in a in a place in america where patriotism uh, matters um, you can see by our military um, our call to action how people here se seem to respond to the the needs of the country mm. so this is a very giving community indeed we are yeah that current museum that you have at the Patriots Point right now, that's mm -hmm. going to be up and running until 2023. Correct. And then you're going to bring, you're hoping to bring on your own in 2023 afterwards. Right. We, we hope to really uh, start construction mm -hmm. on that by January of 2022, oh. giving us a, around 18 months to put the museum up. And our target is to open that museum on July 4th, 2023. And Clinton, I hope you'll come to oh, yes. the ribbon cut. Sure, I'll be there, God willing. <laughs> yeah, there you go. What's going to be the biggest difference between the current museum and the proposed new museum? Well, the expansion, of course. Uh, you know, the the current museum is a is a walk through. It's very well done, nice exhibits and so forth, and mostly digital. Um, it, uh, it tells you a little bit of the history, a lot of wall space and so forth. And what we hope to do is bring that land side, uh, put the offices for the National Medal of Honor Society, which exists on New Yorktown too, in that building, along with our foundation offices, that's the National uh, Medal of Honor Heritage Foundation, to sustain that building. And we'll have event space, um, we'll likely have a chapel, uh, wedding venues, and for other reasons, we, we hope to attract a, a great military uh, patronage. Um, in addition to those who love history. And so we'll have a teaching side to it. We'll have uh, likely have classroom space where, and attract the high schools and, and lower schools from all over the state to come see it. See it. And Will Haney, the mayor of Mount Pleasant, basically confirmed what we just said. He says, hey, the headquarters of the Medal Honor Museum, our recipients stay here. The national site designation by Congress in 1999 stays here. And now we have a new feasible and fitting museum effort here. Mount Pleasant is the home of our nation heroes. How's that effort so far, money-wise? Well, we're moving along pretty well. Uh, we we feel like uh, we we're a little ahead of schedule, actually, um, and we really haven't gotten into our private and corporate donor phase yet. We're just starting that now, mm -hmm. so your timing's great. Yes, sir. Did you bring your wallet? <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it off camera. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, we're we're moving ahead. Uh, we've got. Uh, around $13 million identified. Um, uh, we've got uh, over $8 million committed. We may have another $5 million identified shortly. Um, and then we're, again, going to the, the corporations and the, and the uh, private donors 
which I think is going to be a really exciting part of what we're doing uh, because that's one on one um, with people who care. Yeah. Can you actually identify those 13 people who are going to be donating towards this museum? The, uh, when you say 13. Oh, I mean the uh, private, you know. Uh, well, we we really don't want to get oh, sure. too far ahead sure, of ourselves sure, on that, sure, you know, sure. cause it, but it does, it puts pressure on the donor. Okay, I got you. Um, but we, we will have well more than 13, and uh, we're assembling a list now among our board. And speaking of 13, our board is 13 members. Right. And, uh, I like to say it's an all-star team from the from the Charleston area. I mean, we've got folks that are have served in the military and the, the legal and and uh, other corporate uh, sides of, of the community. Uh, we've got people that understand finance, uh, folks that are in business that are doing really well, um, and those those people are just dynamic, uh, and their support to to this museum effort and to me personally has been. You know, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. And let me go back to the uh, Post of Corey's article from Emily Williams. She writes the following headline just recently, October 3rd. The Medal of Honor Museum project passed on South Carolina. Here's where it's going. Let me read it, a bit of that paragraph. A major museum to honor the nation's most revered war heroes has hitched its start in Texas. About a year after organizers announced it would leave the Charleston area for a larger market. The Medal of Honor Museum Foundation says Wednesday that is taking its project to Arlington near Dallas, obviously. The other finalist was Denver. Foundation CEO Joe Daniels, who's been at the helm of the group since early 2018, described Arlington as the optimal location and announcement about the decision. Of, a, the, of the about 3,500 Medal of Honor recipients, about 70 have lived in the region, according to the group. Construction is planned for the site in the center of the city's growing entertainment district, a re neighbor to the Global Life Park, where the Texas Rangers play, and the Dallas Cowboys home turf AT&T Stadium. The group says it's hoped to have this museum up in 2024. That's about a year after the National Medal Medal of Honor, the National Medal of Honor Heritage Center, that is, is aiming to complete in Mount Pleasant, most likely at Patriots Point, under the Charleston area group that emerged in early 2019. How can I ask this? With this construction going on for this particular location in Texas, are you worried that it will take away funding for your particular construction? Well, not at all. Um, you know, I, I feel like General Livingston feels, who's our, our, our local recipient um, and, and quite a man. But uh, he said all along, and, and we reiterate what he said, there was a group here uh, that, uh, you know, had a, an effort to try to put a museum together and uh, for a number of reasons I don't need to get into, sure, they, sure. they did not get it done. Uh, and, uh, and I can tell you this, we will not fail. We will get it done. But that group left of their own volition and, uh, you know, abandoned the property there and went somewhere else. Okay. Uh, no, no big deal. They, if they are able to get a museum up, we're, we're just as happy as we can be. As General Livingston says, you know, the, the children that would go to that can't all get the trust. And, and that's uh, out in the West, and it's, it's a great place to have another museum. And as far as we're concerned, if they want to build, you know, a third and a fourth and a fifth museum, that'd be great to spread this around. We feel like this country needs this. It needs to have that uh, basic education about what is patriotism, and what did it take for these these men that are in the, this museum uh, to not only survive, uh, but to prove unbelievable uh, heroics in the face of uh, daunting odds? That uh, that said, uh, our only concern with them, and, and we're happy, we hope they get the museum up, and we'll, we'll should have ours up earlier than theirs. Okay. But we might be able to swap exhibits and, and keep theirs fresh and ours fresh at the same time. Uh, exchange ideas and, and, and do some great things for, for the youth of this country. Beyond that, our only concerns, and we can work this in back channels, okay. are that they're using the term national. Mm. And that belongs here, obviously designated by Congress. That's the law. Right. We're, you know, we're just following the law. Sure. The, the second part of that is we need to make our donors from South Carolina whole again. When they left, they took money that belonged to these donors, and despite these donors and uh, you know plenty that I know 
that have written to him, there has been no response to these two donors here. And we're real concerned about the ethics that, that that carries with it. So we hope to resolve that issue and make our donors whole again. In that in that regard, by the way, our board has decided that if we could find who these donors are, if they're identified, we'd like to recognize them in our museum at the level of which they gave, even though we did not receive the money. You talked about that last group that left and obviously went to Texas. Mm -hmm. Did they by chance follow the law? You know, I'm, I'm not a lawyer. I couldn't okay. tell you that. Um, you know, there, there are some concerns. This mm -hmm. is the only thing I, I would tell you. Okay. Uh, let me read another paragraph from Emily's uh, article in the Post. Of course, she writes this. The foundation also ran into snags to town of Mount Pleasant after submitting architectural renderings that showed a building that exceeded local height limits. So when you all are building the new museum, what limits will you have? Well, the accepted limits that are there now are, are 50 feet. We've got a, a pre-design that we've uh, shown around that is at 50 feet. It's a three-story building and it, it clearly can serve us what, what our needs are. Um, so we're, we're not out to fight uh, the town councils sure. and the county folks and, and any officials across the board to build this museum. We, we want to work together with those that put those ordinances together have our setbacks right, have all our permitting done correctly. Um, we want to work with people, not against them. Sure. How long will the permits take for this particular project? Don't know. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, generally, that sometimes those things can take four to six months. So okay. um, that, that, that will be part of, we're, we're, we have committees that will work on that. And we'll have actually a construction and design committee that uh, will forecast the, the permitting and uh, all the soil samples and all, all those little things that uh, somebody like me does not have that knowledge of, of how to uh, uh, preside over. So that's going to be up to a committee. A committee. Uh, I, and matter of fact, let me go to the town of Mount Pleasant because I know Will Haney just tweeted this out just a couple of days ago. He says this too. Mount Pleasant spent $300,000 on design work to move the road and utilities for the now departed previous Joe Daniels Museum Group. They were contract contractually, that is, bound to the site through 2023. I will ask council at our 10 a tomorrow's, uh, tomorrow's council meeting to man our taxpayers' money back. They're trying to get $300,000 back for the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. How much money are you hoping to get back for the donors? Well, let me go back to, to uh, Mayor Will Haney. First of all, I, I tell you, he's, he's a, not only a friend, but a great mayor of yes. uh, Mount Pleasant. I don't think people know that he's had to... Uh, really come forward with some backbone to get a lot of things done despite some of the uh, uh, I guess the, the headwinds he's had um, and I and I admire and respect him for that he did their town spent three hundred thousand dollars on a road that uh, you know this is just for the survey oh, yeah. and so forth and design that they should get back um, so they're they're in line with so many other donors uh, in terms of uh, what they raised and what they left with, that there's a gap. We don't we don't know their financial statement. Sure. The last we knew, they they left with uh, around two million dollars. However, uh, keep in mind that in the five and a half years that they had uh, worked on trying to build this museum, they had raised uh, outside of the governmental sure. money, uh, fourteen million dollars roughly. Um, of that $14 million, they spent, that means they spent nearly 12. That's why uh, we came out uh, early and said, we're going to build this museum, we're going to do it right, we're going to do the right size, the right plan, for the right reasons, and uh, we're going to do a museum or your money back. I don't know if you heard that plan. I remember you saying that, yeah. Well, a museum of your money back means we will not spend corpus funds. We will be caught uh, with $12 million uh, amount of money spent and, and nothing in return. So we're going to make sure that if you give us a dollar or $10 or 10000 for this museum, that if we don't build a museum, we're going to give that money back to you. Give that man, money back to you. Uh, the town of Mount Pleasant, I know this is the second time around for the museum uh, construction and, and idea. How much are you asking from the town of Mount Pleasant now? 
Well, we've already gone to the town of Mount Pleasant, and they have approved a, uh, an, an amount of $3 million, Okay. of which uh, $1.2 million was the leftover funds from that road design that uh, they've already uh, moved to, to us. Okay. And so they have $1.8 million that they, I think their plans are to pay that in, in three years, over three years, uh, even amount. Um when and this even getting money from uh, the county or, yeah. or the town that's always a little bit controversial with the public um, and, and I think that's because the messaging is just not out there they don't really kind of understand how this works okay. we're doing something that has much benefit to the community and to the state and to the country that's that's a given um, that shouldn't cost anybody anything in taxpayer money and it won't um, the return of investment of that, in terms of economic impact, is a, is around ninety two million dollars per year. Conservatively, could be much more. Um, so if you're if you're bringing in ninety two million dollars a year starting in twenty twenty three, right, and your investment is three million, would you think that's a pretty good investment for your community? I would. Okay. Yeah, and just the just the tax return on that for accommodations tax. Oh yes. You know, which is eight percent. Right. Round up to uh, hundred million. Mm -hmm. uh, so the accommodations tax that would come out of that might be eight million per year. Okay. All right. So uh, you know, part of that's all tax. Yeah. So, but the accommodations tax is in that. But that being said, yeah. taxes go to government. So, so if, if it's accommodations tax, sales tax, whatever it is, it ends up back in Columbia, and uh, they divide that back out. So if you're getting a tax revenue of $8 million a year on a, on a $100 million economic impact, meaning that other 92 or whatever, $85 million, whatever it might be, is going into hotels. Yes. Restaurants, um, service stations, gift shops, right. so forth. Do you think it's a good investment? I'm asking you. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I would say yes. <laughs> you talk about Columbia and the state government. How much are you asking from the state? The state is uh, has five million dollars they're holding from the previous group, mm. um, and so we we hope to. Uh, get those funds back and and we'll have to go through the proper channels to do so and that will have to be you know uh looked over by not only the the uh, state house but but also the governor um so and that's the money they had and there may be uh, beyond that a potential to to find some other funds through the state but i, I want to make sure that you understand we're not looking to government or taxes and so forth to pay this whole bill. Sure. In fact, we're only looking to them to pay maybe a third, maybe a little more, we'll see. Uh, what we're looking to is to have private and public, uh, excuse me, private and corporate interest uh, pay most of that bill. And, uh, and that there's a lot of reason for that. Um, and we'll have ways to uh, to benefit those corporations and those uh, private individuals as well. But the the main thing for them, I think, is that the, the, the case we make, that this is all about the coming generations. And the coming generations need to know who these people were. There's 3,507 Medal of Honor recipients that have uh, been awarded uh, since the Civil War. Okay. Uh, and matter of fact, the first black recipient of the Civil War was a guy named William Carney. Where did that happen? Morris Island. Yeah. Uh, you've seen the movie. Right. Probably Glory. Right. Um, uh, in fact, uh, General Livingston would like to put a statue to William Carney up in front of our, our building. I think it's a great idea. Um, so as we go through all of this, and we think in terms of those 3,507 recipients, we only have 71 living. Hmm. So there are many, you know, wars are fought differently these days. They're, they're long distance. They're, they're push button wars in, in a lot of cases, not a lot on the ground. So the, the, those incidents of having uh, uh, a medal of honor type of situation occur are much, much less than they once were. So uh, if, if that's the case, we won't see as many recipients going forward as we did, say, in World War II or Korean War 
especially in Vietnam, most of these recipients are Vietnam era recipients. So going forward, we might not have that living recipient in 50, 100 years to celebrate. We want to know who these people were, mm. who, who these people uh, were in terms of their sacrifice for the country, sure. uh, their willingness to, to die for their country, their selflessness, uh, and especially their bravery on the battlefield. Yeah. If somebody wants to donate towards the Medal of Honor Museum right now, how would they go about that, Tom? Well, the best way is to go to our website. Uh, it's NMOH National Medal of Honor uh, uh, dash HC. Uh, that's uh, HF. I'm sorry, HF Heritage Foundation dot org. O R G. Okay. All right. NMOH dash HF dot org. And I'll put that on the uh, YouTube link so that people can see this as well. Oh, thank you for doing that. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah. And uh, thank you for this interview as well. Oh, well, thank you, Clint. Thank you. My welcome. pleasure. I hope you'll come back sometime. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. I'll be right here. All right. And thank you for coming on Quentin's Bullsucks. Oh, my, my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah.